Hello, my name is Kasha, and I just want to thank you for joining my group today. Um, today, our group is going to be focused on employment skills. So maybe it's been a while since you've worked. Um, maybe it's been a while since you've looked for a job, um, you know, and you just need to brush up on your interviewing skills or, you know, just even what uh, employers are looking for nowadays. So I hope that you find this group beneficial. Um, I hope that you feel more confident when you are looking for a job or you land that interview. So I just, that is my hope is that you walk away from this group feeling more empowered. So I just listed some of the important employment skills here, uh, communication, teamwork, uh, reliability, problem solving, uh, organization and planning, uh, initiative, self-management, leadership, learning, and technology. All right, let's get started. All right, so first we are going to talk about communication. Uh, communication is one of the most important employability skills because it is an essential part of almost any job. So any job that you have, um, you are going to need to learn how to communicate with your coworkers you are going to need to learn how to communicate with your boss, um, with customers. Um, you are going to be dealing with, you know, different personalities and, you know, some pleasant, some not so pleasant, <laughs> some unpleasant personalities. So um, it, you, you have to be ready and, um, you know, practice is probably the best way to learn. So, and then there's different ways of communication now. So we communicate through email, we communicate over the phone, uh, texting, um, you know, you, all of those platforms, it's important to learn how to communicate uh, professionally. So, um, let's see. So, you know, there's, um, Active listening in the workplace is very important. Um, you know, how does it make you feel when you are trying to talk to someone about something very important and they, are, you know, no eye contact, um, you know, maybe they're on their phone or, you know, or they keep interrupting you. That's a big one. <laughs> Um, it, it just, it doesn't make you feel uh, very good. It, it makes you feel, you know, kind of disrespected, um, unimportant. And so it's really important to be intentional about your communication. And I think especially about active listening. Um, I think a lot of us, you know, we live in such busy times and it's so easy. I know for myself, I can easily get like sidetracked in my head, you know, start thinking about something else like, oh yeah, I need to do this, you know? And um, so I, I know for myself, I have to, I'm huge on eye contact for one thing. I just feel like it's, you know, like a respect thing. And I want, I try to make people feel like they are important to me and what they're saying to me is is important. And I think they are important. Um, so I, you know, try to make sure that I'm intentional and I put my phone down, um, you know, eye contact, like I said, and then just, you know, try not to interrupt. Um, you know, sometimes I get very excited and I like wanna share something and, you know, I, you just have to, you know, watch yourself with that. Um, but again, all of it takes practice. Um, you know, it's, we just live in different times where, you know, there's all these different forms of communication. So even, you know, uh, responding to an email in a professional manner, um, you know, answering phones in a professional way. Um, but, you know, it just, it's a very important skill. Um, excellent communication skills make you more employable because they can enhance a company's productivity and efficiency and help prevent the waste of valuable time and resources. Uh, being in 
an effective communicator involves conveying your thoughts and ideas clearly to achieve certain outcomes, as well as listening to your coworkers' instructions, ideas, and intentions. Um, you know, and it depends on the job that you have. Um, you know, like I said, there's going to be different types of communication, you know, emails, phone calls, um, Zoom calls. That's a new one for, you know, a lot of us that we have been doing, you know, the past, what, 18, 19 months. So, um, and then there's different types of communication, uh, verbal, nonverbal, written, and visual. Um, so, you know, it's even important to learn how, like, our nonverbal communication um, is and just... Uh, the importance of that, like even your nonverbal communication, like it can speak volumes, you know, you know, just picture like how you feel like if you come into a business and you see an employee like with their arms crossed, you know, and like no smile. And um, I know for me, like it just it's like to me, it's like they're unapproachable, um, you know, we, we all make judgments, but it just, it's not a very like warm um, feeling. And I try to, I usually avoid the person that has their arms crossed and they, they look upset. Um, and that's not always the case, right? Like some people, they're just, you know, maybe, maybe they've had a bad day, you know, maybe they just got yelled at or, you know, maybe they're anxious. And so you never know, but, um, you know, in the professional world, just I'm learning more and more, you know, the nonverbal stuff is just as important, if not more important. So and then just how you talk to people, again, eye contact, you know, your tone, um, you know, just I, just really, I think it goes a long way just to listen and be helpful and try to find a solution. Um, so Communication skills, you know, uh, it's definitely something that you want to develop and you, there are some things that you can do, you know, to develop your communication skills. So um, some of the things I found online were, you know, uh, communicating on social media, which um, <laughs> can be tricky uh, nowadays. So, you know, I guess it depends depends on the platform that you're on. Um, but um, even like joining a local club um, and then practicing awareness of your facial expressions and body language. So this one makes me laugh because I've been told that I have a really tough time like keeping like, a, like fixing my face, like keeping a poker face. Like when someone tells me something shocking, I guess I, I have a reaction my face. And so I, I'm working on that. <laughs> so there's always things that we can improve on. Um, but, you know, if you need to practice, I say, you know, practice with a friend, practice with a family member, or even, you know, it may sound silly, but record yourself and um, even like doing a mock interview. And those are things that you can work on. So Okay, we'll go to the next topic. All right, so teamwork. This is one of my favorite topics. Um, so good teamwork skills refer to the ability to work uh, well with your colleagues and to achieve a shared goal. Um, teamwork skills such as collaboration can increase your hiring chances because you may be able to help a company reach its goals more effectively. So, and these skills can contribute to a more positive work environment. Um, so, you know, to be a great team player, you need to be comfortable working with people and take responsibility for your share of the work and contribute to team goals. Um, so, you know, uh, positive teamwork goes a long way. Um, you know, I'm sure we've all been in a work environment where teamwork was, you know, non-existent and, or, you know, maybe like a toxic environment and it is not a pleasant um, working experience. It's, you know, I, 
I just thrive when there is good teamwork. Um, you know, there's no drama. It just it just makes the workplace, you know, such a better environment and you want to go to work right and you want to do a better job so i feel like when there's that um you know common goal and everyone is putting in effort and you know they're they have a positive attitude it is going to go far for the team as well as um you know the community they serve uh you know if you have a team that does not work well together like your customers are going to feel that like no matter what field it is um, that's going to trickle down into you know how uh, things run so um and there's things that you know you can do to boost your teamwork skills um so including like volunteering to help co-workers -work, co with projects um, working with others in a local organization, joining a sports team. Um, I'm trying to think when I worked at a certain organization, um, we would have team buildings and we would go to food pantries and we would help, you know, um, unload things and we would get food boxes ready. And it, it really brought us closer together and because you had to have that teamwork and like talk to each other and like hey like so and so is going to do this and um we came together like it actually brought us together so we did team buildings like that and then we had other ones that were you know more fun and kind of uh brought us together like just by getting to know each other better and this person's work style and this person's personality. So all of those things, you know, tie into teamwork, you know, understanding each team member's strength, each team member's, you know, weakness. And not that you're gonna come out and say, oh, that's your weakness, you know, but finding ways to like, okay, you know what? Like this person wants to grow in this area. So let's, you know, let's work on this together. Like, I'll help you with this, you know, and maybe, you know, putting the person in charge of something that they're really good at, you know? Um, and so taking people's strengths and giving them, you know, uh, work that like they thrive in and like, they're really good at that piece of, of the work, you know, maybe there's something that you struggle with. So um, just kind of highlighting that person's strengths. Um, but yeah, so I mean, when you are looking for jobs, that is definitely one of the things that employers will ask about is, you know, how do you work as a team? Or how do you feel about teamwork? And I mean, it's, it's important, you need to learn, you know, how to work with people and you know, um, you know, how are you going to deal with someone that maybe you don't get along with? Because there are personalities, you know, that we just sometimes we clash with someone else. So those are all things, you know, that um, you just you just will have to work on. And um, they're good life lessons, definitely. So. Um, all right, so we will go on to the next one. Okay, so the next topic is reliability. Uh, reliability makes you more employable because it promotes trust between you and your employer. Um, you're, you are a reliable employee if you can consistently complete your tasks on time, deliver quality work, and make minimal mistakes. Um, you must also be able to respond to, you know, requests and emails promptly and only make promises you can keep. Um, again, reliability, it just, it shows your employer that they can trust you, um, you know, they can rely on you and that, that speaks volumes for an employer. Um, if that's something that you struggle with, um, you know, you can practice, you can, you know, maybe you can 
consistently meet or exceed your expected work levels of work performance. Um, you could create schedules for your daily tasks and maintain them. Um, also acknowledging your mistakes and making a conscious effort to avoid them in the future. You know, I, I feel like most employers nowadays, like it goes a long way if you're just honest and you're like, you know what, I am just, I am really struggling with, you know, um, you know, meeting my deadlines or, you know, uh, completing my tasks on time. And, you know, I just saying like, you know what, is there a way that we, that you can help me? Like, you know, can we maybe come up with something or do you have any ideas? You know, like you're showing that employer, like, look, I realize this is an issue and I want to do better. Like I want to improve upon this. And I feel like just being honest and humble and just, you know, saying I'm struggling with this and, you know, like, do you have any ideas? I mean, you never know. Like they could be like, oh, you know what? Like I use a planner, which I highly suggest getting a planner. <laughs> so, um, you know, and just, I mean, maybe a lot of us like, no one has shown us this, you know, we've never been taught maybe how to be reliable and like keeping, you know, a daily schedule and keeping a planner. So, you know, I would think a good employer, they are going to want to teach you and be like, you know what, like, let me help. Like, that's what they want to do. So, but again, it just goes back to, you know, they obviously hired you for a reason. Um, so there's some level of trust already, um, but if you can show them, you know, over and over, like, you know, met my deadline, um, you know, I deliver quality work, like customers are happy, the team is happy, um, you know, you're just, you're on the right path. So, um, but again, if it's something you do struggle with, you know, I just would have an honest conversation with that supervisor and just, you know, say, hey, you know, do you have any ways, you know, that maybe I can learn more accountability, um, you know, or will help me be more reliable. So, all right, on to the next. Okay, so next we are going to talk about problem solving. Uh, this is a skill that your employer will be looking for. Um, I, I feel that they just want to have an employer or I'm sorry, employee that, you know, is able to, if they encounter a problem or an issue, a challenge, they are going to be, be able to find a solution. They're going to be able to, um, you know, determine the most effective solution. Um, you know, and that's going to look different for every position out there, for each position out there. But, um, you know, I think it kind of goes back to like the reliability, like an employer wants to make sure that they have, you know, an employee that isn't going to like freeze and like, you know, I don't know what to do. And it's, it's one thing when you first start a job and you, you aren't sure, you know, how everything may flow and work. Um, but it's another thing if you just kind of like freeze and you almost like cannot make a decision. Um, so, and again, something that is going to take practice and life lessons. Um, so, uh, there are ways that you can become a better problem solver. And, you know, some of those things are undertaking research assignments and projects, uh, participating in team meetings, you know, brainstorming sessions and um, just reg regularly developing your skills by even solving puzzles and playing games. You know, um, it's good for our minds. And I think it also builds confidence, you know, when we realize like, oh my gosh, like I had this obstacle, this challenge, and I worked through it, you know, and I was able to come to a solution and your employer is happy, the customer is happy, your team is happy. Um, so definitely um, a, an important skill that employers are looking for.
Okay, organization and planning. Uh, being able to organize and plan effectively is important because it helps you and your employer save time, effort, and money by improving workflow. It ensures that assignments and projects are completed on time and prevents confusion and errors that can be costly to the company. Um, so you will have deadlines, um, tasks to complete with any job, and you have to be organized. You have to plan ahead. Um, again, this is where a planner comes in handy. Um, you know, I've worked many jobs in my life, and I mean, uh, yeah, all kinds of fields. Like I've I've done it all, and um, planning and organization it, it's it's key. You know, you have to have a schedule. Um, you need to know deadlines and you you need to comp you need to be able to get your tasks done on time without anyone else reminding you you know we're all adults we your employer shouldn't have to remind you they shouldn't have to you know follow up and be like you know are you done with that yet so um again it's it's costly to a company you know when Things aren't done on time. Um, there's errors. Um, it can, it will uh, cause a lot of confusion within your team. Um, so, you know, it's an important skill to have. Um, even, you know, your desk. You know, um, employers do pay attention to your workspace. You know, and they want to see a workspace that's organized. And you know, I mean. It will help you too, as as the employee. Um, when we're organized, when we plan ahead, we're more calm. Um, you know, there's not like the anxiety. So, you know, not only is it good for the company, but it's also good for you. So, um, to be a good organizer and planner, you should be able to identify tasks, prioritize them, create schedules for them, and complete them on time. Um, if you're in a leadership position, you need to develop systematic processes for achieving goals and delegating tasks appropriately. And again, you can develop organizational and planning skills by developing a timetable for your daily activities, organizing an event, um, writing down your tasks and activities in a planner. So this is my planner. You can find planners anywhere. You can find them online. You can get them on Amazon. Um, I can't remember where I got this one, but I mean, it's, but I'm kind of a nerd. I like that stuff. I'm the one that has whiteboards all over my house. So, um, but again, it, it will cause, um, you know, you less to be more uh, concentrated on your work and, um, you know, you'll just feel better about uh, the job that you're doing and your employer will be pleased as well. So, okay, so initiative. So uh, taking initiative uh, means recognizing a problem and solving it. Preparing for a potential crisis by taking preemptive action, taking advantage of opportunities and having a positive attitude. Um, it shows that you can think for yourself and take the necessary actions without being instructed to do so. Um, as a person with initiative, you have a strong drive to succeed and a desire to keep improving yourself through continuous learning, which makes you a valuable employee to any organization. Um, employers consider initiative one of the key employability skills and value employees who possess self-motivation to complete tasks without being asked. So we did talk about this on another topic, um, but it goes back to the, you know, being reliable, the employer being able to trust you and, you know, them not needing to come to you and like, you know, remind you that you have this deadline due or, you know, just second guess, like, oh gosh, did they not, you know, turn that in? Or did they not complete this? Did they not call, you know, that client? So 
um, initiative is very important. Um, again, the self-motivation. They want employees that are self-motivated and they get their work done. You know, it sounds so simple, but um, it must happen that people, you know, they maybe get behind and they have to be asked over and over and um, no one wants to, you know, kind of check in on another adult over and over, you know, to make sure they get their work done. Um, again, we're all adults and um, I really don't think another adult wants to do that to another person. So, um, Let's see. So the flexibility and courage of such employees can push organizations to innovate and achieve a competitive edge. Um, and I like these little tips they have here that how you can improve, um, improve your ability to take it, uh, action. So you can do this by approaching companies and other organizations to inquire about job opportunities. That looks good. You know, um, when an employer has someone that is actively, you know, pursuing and uh, inquiring about job opportunities and like they want to work, that, that's awesome. Um, proposing changes to the policies or activities of a group you belong to. Um, and you could, you could also uh, set up a local club or fundraiser. So again, it's the self-motivation, the, you know, getting the work done and having that drive to, you know what, like, this is what we're going to do. Let's get this done. And, um, you know, it makes your employer happy. So, all right, on to the next one. Okay. So I feel like some of these are kind of redundant, but self-management. So again, self-motivation, you know, being reliable, being independent, um, Self-management refers to the ability to perform job duties satisfactorily with little or no supervision. So again, you know, uh, employers want someone that can manage themselves and their tasks and they're motivated, you know, to uh, deliver solid work and meet deadlines. Um, if you have good self-management skills, you can help your supervisor or manager save time and effort simply because you need minimal guidance and assistance from them. You know, supervisors, managers, they are very busy. They are trying to juggle so many different things. Um, so they really are looking for people that, you know, can manage themselves. Um, not saying that, you know, they also have the important task of teaching and coaching, uh, training their employees. But, um, you know, after that training, like they just need people to get the work done, you know, and, um, deliver a solid product, um, solid service, you know, consistently. So, um, also, being a self-motivated person means you may be less likely to have productivity issues. These abilities can make you an appealing candidate to most employers. Uh, you can develop self-management skills by asking for more responsibilities at work. Employers love that. Uh, creating schedules for certain activities and, and maintaining them. And then participating in volunteer work that allows you to work independently. Um, you know, teamwork is huge. We covered that early on, uh, but being able to work independently is also important. And it is something that employers always ask about. They always ask about, you know, how do you work as a team? And then they always ask how you work independently. Um, you know, they really need someone that can do both because you are going to need to work independently, but you also need to work as a team and be able to work together and, you know, complete tasks. So, so I, again, I feel like some of these are redundant, but if you can see a common theme here that, you know, they need people to be reliable. They need people to, you know, 
be self-motivated, um, you know, self-management. So just some things to, you know, keep in mind and even highlight on a resume and also during an interview. So leadership. Uh, employers look for good leaders because they can benefit organizations in many ways. Uh, leaders, as a leader, you play an important role in ensuring that your team shares the same vision as the company and works in unison with other teams and departments to achieve a common goal. Um, you know, usually uh, people in leadership, they develop strategies for achieving objectives. Um, they have a huge job of keeping a team motivated. Um, you know, monitor work performance so they produce better results for the company. Um, someone in leadership, they also have a huge job of, you know, uh, a posit keeping a positive uh, work environment. Um, you know, if the leadership is, you know, poor, it's, it's definitely going to affect the entire team. Uh, leadership skills are important at every level. If you are seeking a like a management position, you need to be a good leader to motivate your team members. Like I said, like the positivity. Um, you can also benefit from having some leadership ability in entry level positions because it may help you stand out and climb the ranks faster. Uh, you can show leadership by directing and motivating your coworkers. Uh, setting objectives and goals for your team, um, improving work practices, and coaching your colleagues. Um, and leadership, I just thought of something. So even, um, you know, there's jobs where most jobs you will be required, expected to train um, other employees that, you know, may be hired on. So um, I've had many jobs like that, you know, um, they're going to expect you, you know, and if you're a good employee, they, it's almost like an honor, you know, that you get to train someone. Um, they must trust you enough, you know, to have that, that take that leadership role and train someone. Um, so, I mean, it's a very positive, uh, uh, it's a very positive trait to have. Um, and you can learn to become a better leader by, uh, you know, attending a leadership course, uh, starting a local group, you know, in your community, and then reading about the habits of successful leaders, uh, particularly those in your industry. Um, I was at an organization once where that was a huge thing. They would have leadership meetings and they were always, I think, required. I think required to read a book on leadership. So, um, yeah. So, okay, we will go on to the next one. All right. So next is learning. Um, having strong learning skills means understanding new concepts and methods quickly, taking on new tasks, adapting to change and having the tendency to improve your knowledge and skills continually. Um, Employers who have good learning skills may help employers fill challenging roles more quickly and reduce the cost of staff training. Good learners are especially desirable to companies that are at the forefront of innovation because they can help transition to new methods and technologies more smoothly. So, um, you know, in a job, you know, they need someone that can learn quickly, um, you know, that another thing they will ask you is, is how flexible you are. Uh, so adapting to change and, you know, having the tendency to improve your knowledge and skills, you know, throughout your work, um, your career. So, um, you know, whenever you start any job, you know, they usually have a training period and they do they need someone that's paying attention um you know that is you know passionate about learning and the field that they're in and um you know you just they need someone that is able to take on those tasks so um ways you can increase your ability to learn 
um, are taking a course to improve your learning skills, such as speed reading, uh, memory boosting, or an accelerated learning course. And it just made me think that um, a lot of companies, they, you know, it would be nice if they offered these things, and I'm sure some of them do. Um, researching skills and activities related to your job, such as organizing, teamwork, or presentation, presentation skills. Um, also teaching yourself a new skill or hobby. So, um, yeah. That you know the presentation skills, presentation skills, something that you know when I got done with college and I went to college later, um, you know, and I started a career in behavioral health, and one of um, our big requirements was to facilitate groups. Not my strength. Um, I tried and I tried and I tried and. You know, I've, it just, it's something that I really struggle with. Um, some people are so good at it and they just have like no nerves. They, they're such good with speaking. And, you know, I have a friend, she does, um, she can do groups, no problem. Uh, I learned a lot from her, by the way. And uh, she teaches uh, CPR classes. Like she just, she is a pro. Uh, but she told me, you know, but Kasha, you get me on a phone and she's like, I, I stutter and I like, you know, it's super awkward. So, you know, we all have different strengths. Um, we all have things we can work on. Um, yeah. So I just, you know, I, just do your best. That's all you can do. And I know the company that I was, that I was with when we had to facilitate groups, they were all about, you know, um, growth and, you know, uh, you have to face those things head on, you know, to grow. And, um, I tried, <laughs> so, so, you know, you just do your best. And I think another thing employers want to see is just that you have that openness to learn and you want to learn and you want to improve. So, um, again, all of this, we're always a work in progress. So, all right, I think we have one more uh, topic to cover. Okay, technology. So I know this one can be kind of intimidating, especially maybe not the best picture graphic I used here. <laughs> Looks a little intimidating. But, um, you know, companies, they are searching for um, employees with technical skills to, you know, because we do use so much technology now. Um, majority of jobs i mean they do they want to make sure that you know how to use a computer you know email uh, office um i'm sorry word um what's another one oh excel which you need like an entire class for that thing so you know there's just i think a big one though is they want to make sure that you know can answer emails and you can learn all of those things. Um, but then there are people like, they're like, I have never sent an email. I don't have an email address. Um, you know, they're like, Kasha, I haven't typed for, you know, 20 years. So, um, there are things that you can do to improve on, you know, like computer skills. Um, even getting an email address and, you know, just sending emails to family and friends, um, you would be surprised. It does improve, you know, like your typing skills. Like if you are trying to get a job um, and you need to have at least, you know, 40 words per minute. Um, I, that is how I learned. <laughs> this was a long time ago, but um, email had just, I think it was like brand new. And that is really how I learned to type. Um, sending emails to family, sending emails to friends, you know, what was that? Like the, like 2000. So, um, there are things you can utilize to, you know, improve on these, on these skills. There's, um, I can even include, um, a link at the end of this, but there's even like typingtest.com or something like that. And you can go on there and you can just do a typing test and, 
you know, it gives you your score and you can just keep working on it. Um, you know, if you want to journal, you could keep a journal on your laptop. You could, you know, learn to type that way. So there's all these ways and, you know, it's just finding what works for you. Um, but I would definitely say that email is a huge, you know, uh, thing that you need to know how to do uh, if you, if you're, you know, looking for a job. Um, you know, there are some things that you can do to improve um, in this area. So enrolling in a technology course, and again, hopefully your employer would offer that or pay for that. Um, you know, trying out new apps and technology in your daily life. So, you know, that's right. Like there's an app for literally everything. Um, and staying up to date with the latest technology in your industry. So like in my, in my field, you know, behavioral health, we do, we have a ton of emails. Um, uh, what else? Phone calls, cell phone. Uh, we, you know, we even do texting. Um, so, oh, Zoom. That's a new one we've had to learn <laughs> with, uh, you know, everything that's happened over the past 20 months. Um, Zoom, that was completely new to, I think, majority of us. Um, so, yeah, did a lot of meetings that way. Um, so, you know, and again, we all have had to learn. So, you know, everything, again, it's a learning lesson. But there are things that you can utilize on the Internet, um, on your phone, to help you um, grow in those areas that you may struggle with. So anyway, I just want to thank you for joining me today. And um, I will include some links at the end, you know, just for, you know, to practice the typing um, and just a few other things. But all right. I hope you found this helpful and thank you again.